Control M's Workload Change Manager simplifies dev and ops collaboration and accelerates time to production for application workflows. It supports a collaborative process that guides developers to quickly build or modify workflows that adhere to predefined enterprise site standards for the production environment. So let's take a look. This is an example of a site standard. This organization has several applications, and that is one of the first attributes that must be selected, such as order to cash or payroll. Many of the other parameters in the workflow then follow. Let's see how this works. We go into the planning domain. Let's create a new workflow and see how site standards guide us along. I've selected a site standard and some of the other parameters are now immediately filled in or selected for me. The folder is created and you can see that the folder name has a template as defined by the site standard. We also have to specify a valid application. Let's do that. You can see that as soon as we filled in an application name, the folder name validation is now based on that application name and we are getting a message guiding us what the format of that name should be. Now let's add a job. Again you can see just as for the folder name we are given a template for the format of the job name. I then have to choose where this job will run and as you can see, I am again guided, telling me that it needs to be prod agents. As I proceed to define the job, I am guided in a similar way with information telling me what the format should be. Eventually, I will complete my job flow, and then I can check it in and run it or submit it for its path towards production. This is the way you build jobs using a graphical interface. But let's say I'm a developer and I'm using the Python client to build my workflows in Python. Here I am in a Jupyter notebook using Google's collaboratory or collab. And I have some code building a workflow. Let's run this. We can see that the Python client is generating a workflow. This is the workflow we want, so I can see that the structure seems to be what I actually want. But you can see that I've made a mistake. I have either omitted or incorrectly specified the application, and you can see that I am being told what the valid applications are as opposed to the one that I have actually coded. This helps me get my workflow structured correctly so that when it gets into production, control M um, authorizations will apply. The people that need to perform certain functions on workflow will be able to perform those functions. So for example, if I am a member of the finance group, here are the things that I could do against the jobs that look like this. Their job names start with the applications that belong to finance. And of course, anyone who is not part of the finance group will have different authorizations that will prevent them from inadvertently performing actions against finance jobs that may result in either failure or exposure of information.